Have you heard of the Panama Papers? The leaked papers dominated newsstands this past week. Today on Issues, we provide some answers on the alleged documents' implications for worldwide financial transactions. The British government is being pressured to support the, EU, the EU's um, blacklist. But the breaking news of the week was... Champion, champion. We have snippets of the winning team's return. I'm Adrian Atkinson and this is Jamaica Magazine. Stay with us. You'll be glad you did. This is the Aedes aegypti mosquito that spreads the Zika, chikungunya, and dengue viruses. Protect yourself from the bite of this mosquito. A message from the Ministry of Health. Jamaica's financial sector is sound, strengthened by critical pieces of legislation. While there are lessons to be learned from the leaked Panama Papers, Jamaica can take comfort that it's not embroiled in the matter. Next, Chairman of the Jamaica International Financial Services Authority speaks openly on the matter. Watch this. Thanks for joining us for Issues and Answers. I'm Ian Boyne. The release of the Panama Papers has created quite a stir around the world. These papers concern offshore financial transactions. Jamaica has for some time been making valiant efforts to develop the country as an international financial center. Um, what does the release of these papers um, say about these, these attempts? Will uh, Jamaica's attempts be, be, be stymied now that there is so much attention on offshore uh, financial companies? Well, we have one of the country's leading tax experts uh, with us to discuss this. Eric Crawford is the chairman of the Jamaica International Financial Services Authority. And uh, he has been studying this matter of international financial centers, offshore uh, transactions for a number of years and has been a leading advocate of our attracting financial services. So we put the relevant issues to him. We thank you for your company. Good to have you, uh, Eric. Thank you very um, much for the opportunity. For, for so many years, your name has been yeah. synonymous with this uh, yeah. thrust toward having Jamaica as a, as a center right. for financial uh, services. We will talk about the country's advantages in that era. But before that, the Panama Papers, the release of, uh, of these papers, over 11 Point five million documents mm -hmm. linking the names of famous uh, people to shell companies um, mm -hmm. with illegal transactions. Not all of transactions, of course, are yeah. illegal. Assess the impact of, 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 of that for us, especially with our attempts. Yes, well, naturally, it, it brings the focus uh, of illegal activity, on illegal activity, and the use to which companies like these are put. It's very important for us to appreciate that there are many legitimate reasons why pe people establish um, what we call offshore companies, companies outside of their own jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. They are used extensively by multinational businesses, um, wealthy families, uh, funds, uh, investment vehicles, and so on. And there are many legitimate reasons why they are, they are maintained. Mm -hmm. um, I have been engaged for a very long time in assisting with the, with the planning and structuring of international businesses. Uh -huh. And um, I can say proudly that I've never participated in any scheme to, uh, to do anything illegal. Yes. Um, the question of morality, you know, is always the subjective. Separate. What, mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. one thinks is immoral may not be. Mm -hmm. And this is not a new phenomenon. In fact, um, The Guardian, I was reading on this Guardian same newspaper. issue, The Guardian newspaper yesterday had a headline um, indicating that Britain, the British government is being pressured to support the, EU, the EU's um, blacklist. Uh, last year, in 2015, um, about the third quarter, the EU published 
a list of countries um, uh, on a blacklist, yeah. which um, it identified those countries as having tax regimes which are inimical to the interests yes. of the e EU. These are tax havens. Right. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Britain did not support that, that move. And, mm -hmm. and the Guardian is saying that you, you asked about the implication yes, or the effect no, of this Guardian. Of course. So there's going to be more so, pressure. So, yeah. So the EU is now pressuring the government, That's right. the British government, to be more enthusiastic because Britain mm -hmm. did not support the, the promulgation of this list mm -hmm. um, because there is a formal process maintained by the, by the um, OECD countries through an organization called the Global Forum, right. which acts as um, perhaps a global policeman mm -hmm. um, in ensuring that countries adopt certain standards, which we can speak about a little mm -hmm. bit more later. And Britain saw this as an attempt, and many jurisdictions saw this as an attempt to circumvent the work of that official organ of the mm -hmm. OECD. Mm -hmm. But now, the, with this, um, the EU is using the opportunity to say yes. to Britain, you must support our yes. attempts to create this balance. So, so, Eric, <coughs> is there likely to be more pressure on Jamaica not to go the way of developing an international financial uh, centre? Will the... the, 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 the major developed countries be looking more askance yes. at financial centers, offshore um, financial services center. When you think about that before we come back from the break, we are talking about the implications of what has been called the, the Panama Papers, uh, which ha have created a, an enormous um, buzz around the world in terms of the person's who are on this list is 11.5 million um, documents that um, the journalists have been going over in the last year and which were released just this month. Our leading tax expert Eric Crawford is talking to us about the implications of that in the context of Jamaica's attempts to develop an international financial center here. We take a break, but we'll be right back. Tax Administration Jamaica is working to serve you even better. Have you used the upgraded electronic service RACE2? Through this online platform, you can check statement balances, start the application process for a taxpayer registration number, file income tax returns, and much more. No lines, no hassle. It's just a click away. I like the system and it is very, very, very good. I find it um, user-friendly. Log on to jamaicatax.gov.jm or call 1-888-TAX-HELP for details. Use RAISE2 and experience the upgrade. Welcome back. The chairman of the Jamaica International Financial Services Authority and leading tax expert in Jamaica, Eric Crawford, is our guest. So yes, Eric, does this mean that Jamaica is in a more precarious position? now that there is this focus. Uh, why is Jamaica different, if, if at all? I, I spoke about the organized um, monitoring and regulation of the industry globally. That has been put in place largely by the OECD oh. through the work of the Global Forum that I mentioned earlier. Um, Jamaica ranks very highly in the assessment of the Global Forum. In our, our, in our latest ranking, we were ranked largely compliant um, the, 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 the most highly ranked countries are ranked um, fully compliant. We were ranked uh, largely compliant because of maybe three deficiencies in our regime, mm -hmm. which are being addressed very aggressively they are being addressed. as we speak. Yeah, and we are hopeful that by the time um, 2017, when we get another assessment, we would have addressed those. Um, so uh, the, there is an organized, it's not just a fly-by-night or a very sub a subjective mechanism for determining which countries are compliant with the global standards. I mean, and we are, uh, we are living with and respectful of those global standards. So how do we compare like the US, UK, these countries? Um, ironically, we are, we are ranked at the same level as the United States. We are at the same level, uh, level as the United US, States? Um, the, US? Uh, the US was only like we were um, largely compliant in the last rankings. Oh, oh, um, I believe in the Caribbean, Cayman Islands was the only other jurisdiction that was ranked 
um, hold, uh, largely compliant. I think most of our colleagues, our neighbors were ranked partially compliant. So, so we have put a lot, invested a lot of effort and, and money in, in bringing up our rating and, and being seen as, as respectful of the international standards. Um, so we, we comply with our uh, FATCA re, uh, requirements and the anti-money laundering requirements and so on. We are very aggressive about that. But it's important that I make the point that we don't see ourselves as creating a mechanism or a, a jurisdiction that facilitates tax evasion. And that's one of the major concerns of the Global Forum and the world, the OECD and the world community. Oh. And we are signing up, we have signed up so far for the exchange of information on demand. Um, oh. The standard has yes. since moved yes. to um, the global standard to requiring jurisdictions to sign up um, to exchange of information automatically. Okay. And we are already um, complying with that because we have signed the, onto FATCA. Yes. And, and the, the, two, the two regimes, the Global Forum regime and the FATCA regime go hand in hand. The Global Forum regime is just coming a little bit later than FATCA. We have signed our treaty with the United States already. I see. And so... Um, so the big countries wouldn't have any concerns about, uh, major concerns about us. Uh, well, yeah, and, um, some countries will always have concern about Conveniently. any facility that allows their nationals yes. to, let me say, optimize their tax yes. liabilities. Yes. Um, they will always have concerns about that. But there is an established standard, a set of established standards um, for uh, judging jurisdictions mm -hmm. as to whether they are conducting their affairs in a legitimate and an acceptable manner or not. And Jamaica is right up there with any jurisdiction, certainly in this part of the world. Um, so, yes, there are the countries who don't like what we're doing, but, but um, judging us, and we have had informal um, discussions with the, the, the agencies that matter, and they are appreciative of the efforts that we have made. So it's very important that we but, maintain but that. But certainly, we have made the legislative moves yes. that would prevent yes. the kind of illegality yes. which has been condemned in the, in, in the Panama Papers. And to address the concern of, of the larger countries. The transparency, countries. yes. I can probably give That's you a, a very, a very um, good example of it in that we changed our income tax legislation I think it was in 2014 to allow our revenue to investigate um, the affairs yes. of, uh, of a, say, a business or an individual, yes. even where they don't have what is called a tax interest. Important. Normally, uh, uh, you, you would only be investigated by your ta tax authority, mm -hmm. by Jamaican tax mm -hmm. authority, if Jamaica has a, a tax interest in you, if you should be paying tax in Jamaica. But one of the standards established is that your revenue must, in order to fulfill or international obligations. Your revenue must be invest able to investigate anybody, whether they have a tax interest in you or not. Because we have signed on to exchange in information yes. with a number of countries. We have, we have 12 or 13 tax treaties. Um, over the years, we have, we have been very aggressive about signing tax treaties which require us to exchange information with, the t with tax authorities of our treaty partners. And so the standard says, you can't exchange information with me if you don't have the right to get the information. Yes. And we changed our legislation in 2014, I think it was, to facilitate that. As I speak to you, one of the major concerns um, that has been revealed in the, this uh, Panama Papers, Panama Papers yes. debacle is the right of people to have uh, bearer shares, companies, to yes. have companies holding bearer shares. Yes. So nobody can tell who is behind those companies. Yes, shell company. we, we are in the process. We have done all the work necessary to prevent, although that's not a mechanism that has been a major um, facility in Jamaica, but we are changing our law to prevent that mm -hmm. ahead of, of, of many, many jurisdictions, many advanced jurisdictions, that, yes. including OECD jurisdictions, which are not too far from us who still facilitate bearer shares, and there's a, a global pressure on jurisdictions to and prevent Jamaica that. And is we ahead are, of those. We, we are well advanced. Well we, have, advanced. we are not quite there yet. That yes. is one of the concerns that I spoke about earlier. Mm -hmm. But we are well advanced. But I want to make the point, Ian, that, that our, the viability of what we are trying to do is not predicated on um, people uh, avoiding tax. Yes, tax planning is important, and that's, that's something that's very dear to my heart. Yes. And, and multinationals naturally have pay a lot of interest in managing their global tax affairs and, and we do want to be in that space. 
But our major, uh, our major value proposition is really the skills that we bring to the table. Okay. We have a very large cadre of very skilled professionals. We have over 1,200 um, accountants who are trained and are as qualified as accountants anywhere in, in the world. Um, we have a lot of uh, foreigners who are looking at Jamaica now for that reason. We have more lawyers than per capita than, uh, you know, than many jurisdictions across the world, highly trained. Yeah. Not to mention our banking community. Mm -hmm. um, and, and these are the skills, our, our corporate secretaries, I couldn't forget to mention them. We have a lot of, lot of those professionals and those skills in Jamaica, which are world class in, in, in you, know, I, I, you know, somebody paid a tribute to me that he, when, when he met me, he was surprised to learn that I had developed my, my I, I got educated mm -hmm. right here in Jamaica and I never worked outside of Jamaica excepting for a short stint um, with the firm that, with PricewaterhouseCoopers, which um, is responsible for my, where I am, yeah? Yes. Uh, so we have global standards among our professionals, unquestionably, and they, they excel when they leave Jamaica and we have several thousand of them in Jamaica and these are people who are are very capable mm -hmm. of providing the services to the international business community that are that are required and that are provided by competing jurisdictions mm -hmm. right here in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Many of, our, of, of the people who run those industries in the Caribbean jurisdictions are Jamaicans mm -hmm. and they are saying to me when are you going to get this thing in place yeah. so that we can come home and send our children to school mm -hmm. in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Several of them have said that to us. So that is our value proposition, our mm -hmm. main value proposition. Of course we are closest to the largest market in the world. Mm -hmm. We are hour and a half mm -hmm. from the largest market in the world. Mm -hmm. We have a first world telecommunications uh, and internet capability. I just had some visitors from England and they say that our internet yeah. is superior to what they are experiencing in London. <laughs> London. And they were, they were very surprised because they hadn't been to Jamaica for a very long time. So we have all of those attributes. We are accustomed to hosting people, yes. you know? And, and so we are I'm very gung-ho about the the business prospects and just the, the, the viability in terms of our assets. So we have the foundation for growth and prosperity. Yes. And you just ha you only have to look at the, 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 um, the, the business processing industry mm -hmm. to see how BPO. successful we have been at that. Yes. At a, it's very similar. Last time I looked, we had 40 million US dollars invested in that industry. We have global countries companies um, citing their operations in yes. Jamaica. We, are, we have to bring you back, you have, you have a lot of um, <laughs> in, in information. He is a leading tax expert in Jamaica, Eric Crawford, chairman of the Jamaica International Financial Services Authority, telling us why uh, we have put ourselves in a position not to be associated with any of the scandals uh, which are attached to the release of what has been called the Panama papers. Stay tuned to us here on Issues and Answers. Next week I'll be back. Until then, Ian Bourne wishing you a pleasant day. In observation of Autism Awareness Month, this next feature highlights how the Education Ministry is meeting the needs of students diagnosed with the illness. There's much more to educating our children than confining them to textbooks or curricula. Every child has their learning style and sometimes it's made difficult when it's compounded with a learning disorder. Hello, I'm Carrie Ann Smith. The number of diagnosed cases of autism in Jamaica is on the increase. And the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information is tasked with the responsibility of ensuring that provisions are in place to facilitate the learning of these students. With me is Acting Assistant Chief Education Officer in the Special Education Unit in the Ministry, Mrs. Ann Newman. Welcome. Thank you, Kerry. All right, so let's get into it. What are the numbers as it relates to the increase in autism in schools? Okay. The Center for Disease Control in the United States suggests that there is a ratio of one in every 68 births. When that is applied to a Jamaican birth rate in Jamaica, it means that as many as 500 odd students or children could be born with autism. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and there is, it is skewed towards boys, so the ratio is four to one. All right, before we even get into exploring the issue, what is autism? Autism spectrum disorder is a developmental disorder that's usually diagnosed by age four. Children with autism or, the spec or who are on the spectrum 
usually manifest some disorders in communication, um, social disorders, and very often have behavioral disorders. So how is the ministry handling the cases in schools? Well, for the cases that come to our attention, because remember that we now have a passbook that's read, um, monitored in the Early Childhood Commission years. So students coming over to main ministry would travel with their passbook and hopefully by that time, at age six, they would have been diagnosed. Unfortunately, some students have fell through the cracks and are not diagnosed as early. So once they, they're brought to our attention and there is a diagnosis, then we can do the appropriate placement. Remember I said it's a spectrum disorder, so some children are, have a mild case oh, okay. and some children more moderate or severe. Students who are on the spectrum need different interventions. So depending on the severity of the diagnosis, whether it's mild, moderate or severe, they are placed in the appropriate settings. Students with mild autism usually are educated in the mainstream, whereas others who are severe or in the moderate range are educated in our special schools. Okay, so it's important for them to be diagnosed early. Critical, critical, critical. Early diagnosis and intervention is the key to the measure of success we have. All right, so now that you're talking, it seems to me it's a holistic approach because parents need to ensure that if it is that they're seeing any of these signs that they get their children tested. Parents need to remember that they're usually their child's first teacher and they need to follow their instinct and wherever they have reason to be suspicious that something could not be quite so right, mm -hmm. it is their responsibility to seek professional advice okay. and assistance. All right, so what are the programs or intervention strategies that are in place to ensure that these children are not lost in the system? Okay, again, we go back to early intervention. Right. Once students are diagnosed, mm -hmm. then it is the responsibility of the parents, and if they're in a school program, early childhood, or wherever they may be on the continuum, it is mm -hmm. the responsibility of the system to make the appropriate referrals. Persons can come to ministry at any time, the special education unit, for us to advise and help with placement of students. I know that the ministry uh, promotes an inclusive, integrated system. Are the schools prepared for this? There is some measure of preparedness. Um, since 2005, all teachers in Teachers College were exposed to an introductory course in exceptionalities. This course really is just a cursory course, and it means that teachers in the regular system should be able to detect and have reasons to suspect that if a child is not developing along the normal path mm -hmm. and suggest to parents that they have the child assessed. Once the assessment is done and the diagnosis is made, you'll get a fulsome report that gives recommendations as to the way where the child should be educated and programs that the child will need, support programs that the child will need. In addition to the training of teachers, we now have special needs coordinators who work with the regular schools that will develop and present workshops right. depending on the needs in the school. And those children who are in the mainstream can be educated by specially trained special educators in pull-out classes or self-contained classes. Okay, and how, how should we treat these children? You know, many times we label them as um, just rude, out of order. How, how, do, how should we even react to them? Well, first of all, it needs an understanding. Yeah. And um, sometimes we are not as sympathetic as we ought to be. Mm -hmm. But the first thing is, if we give unconditional love, then we will see that children who may act outside of what we consider the norm are actually having some difficulty. And we need to just be empathetic to their parents, not to label them. Thank you so much. Um, but before we go, can you just leave us with a few tips, parents, teachers, as to how we can deal with children with autism? I can't overemphasize. Early intervention is the best. And I would also recommend to parents, once a child has been diagnosed to be on the spectrum, that they join a support group. There's a Jamaica Autism Support Group. And just to get feedback and support from other parents who are in a similar situation, cuts the, the, the journey in half. And to teachers, 
seek more information. There's always, as a professional, we always need to develop and grow. Seek, there's a lot of information on the net. Mm -hmm. Seek more information. It will make you a better professional. Thank you so much, Mrs. Newman. My pleasure. Let's celebrate Jamaica to the world. Fastest man in the world. First Jamaican woman to win gold in Olympic 100 meter sprint. An upcoming global superstar. Mouth watering meals. And a vibrant set of people. We are Jamaicans. Let's get together and bring back the love. Last Sunday, the nation and indeed the region was singing in unison. Rally, rally around the West Indies. The tree peat win clinched by the victory of the West Indies men's team was a fabulous Sunday lunch. Here are highlights of members of the women and men's team's arrival back home. to warmly welcome home Jerome and Marlon and to just say to you that I am so proud of you and your performance that words can't express the way I feel. You made us very very proud as West Indians. It's a moment to savor for years to come because West Indies cricket means so much to us as peoples of the Caribbean. It unites us and it gives us a great feeling of achievement when we do well. I just want to say thanks to, you know, to everyone who came out today. Um, I feel really, really good. Um, more like special. Champion, champion, everybody know the victory, we know what it means to the entire Caribbean to win cricket, to win tournament. And we did it not for ourselves, but for the entire Caribbean. Being, being the top rank of the marketing um, team for West Indies. The guys were, were, were really, really under the pump, wanting to go out and do well. The feeling is prestigious, I must say. We must continue to give our cricketers the support. I hope to see great things happening through the JCA for the cricketers who shone and who made it possible. And to say to all of you, West Indies cricket, is back. Champion, 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 champion. Your thought for the week. Good, better, best. Never let it rest till your good is better and your better is best. That's all we have time for in this week's program. But another is coming your way tomorrow. In the meantime, find out more about autism or the West Indies Cricket Renaissance on our webpage, jis.gov.jm. We're also on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. So log on and stay in the know. Until next time, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Have a healthy, happy and productive week. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.